Have you ever wanted to try a different operating system, like Linux, but didn't want to mess up your main computer? Or maybe you need to test software in a safe, isolated environment? Well, that's exactly what virtual machines are for. Today, we're diving into VMware Workstation Pro, one of the most powerful and popular desktop virtualization tools out there. And don't worry if you're a complete beginner. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to create and run your very first virtual machine. Stick around because you're about to unlock a whole new world of computing. First things first, what is it? In simple terms, VMware Workstation lets you run a completely separate computer with its own operating system inside a window on your current computer. This simulated computer is called a virtual machine, or VM. It acts like a real PC, but it's just a bunch of files on your hard drive. This means you can experiment, test, and learn without any risk to your actual machine. Common uses include software development and testing running Linux on a Windows PC or vice versa, creating isolated labs for cybersecurity, trying out old or new operating systems. Before we start, you'll need two things, VMware Workstation Pro, you can download a fully functional VMware workstation for free from the Broadcom website. Just check out the video in the description on how to download VMware workstation. Installation is straightforward on Windows. If you are on Linux, check the video in the description on how to install on Linux. You also need an operating system installer. This is the software you want to install inside the VM. For this tutorial, I'll be using Ubuntu Linux, which is also free and popular for beginners. You can download it from ubuntu.com. You'll want the ISO file, which is a disk image the VM can boot from. Ah, you will also need to enable virtualization on your computer. On most computers, it is enabled by default. If not, check out the video in the description on how to enable virtualization. Once you've downloaded and installed the VMware workstation, whether on Windows or Linux, launch the application. You'll be greeted with this home screen. This is your dashboard where all your virtual machines will live. Let's create our first VM. Click on Create a New Virtual Machine. The new virtual machine wizard will pop up. Choose the typical setup option. It's easier for beginners. Now, it asks for the installer. This is where that ISO file comes in. Select Use ISO Image and click Browse to find and select your Ubuntu ISO file or any other OS image ISO, like say Windows 11. VMware will automatically detect the type of operating system you are trying to install. When VMware detects your OS, it streamlines installation with the right settings and even automates the setup process for supported systems. If the OS isn't recognized like very new or rare distros, you just do the manual installation instead, like here it has detected Windows 11. It has failed to detect Debian 13 because it's new. This OS was released a few weeks ago. Now, it's time to fill in some simple details. Your name, a username, and a password. This will be the login for your virtual Ubuntu machine. Next up, naming your VM. Give it a descriptive name like Ubuntu 24.04. Also choose where you want to store it. The default is usually fine, but if you have a larger secondary drive, you might want to put it there. Now, assign the disk size. I usually recommend at least 20 to 40 gigabytes depending on your operating system. Don't worry, VMware uses this space virtually so it won't immediately take all of it from your hard drive. When you're setting up a new virtual machine in VMware, it asks if you want to store your virtual disk as a single file or split it into multiple files. If you go with a single file, everything is kept in one big chunk which usually gives you slightly better performance and makes it easier to move your VM around as long as your drive supports big files. If you choose split into multiple files, 
VMware will break the disk into smaller pieces, which is handy if you're moving the VM to a USB stick, an older drive, or anything formatted with FAT32 that can't handle really large files. For most modern PCs, single file is the better choice, but if you know you'll be transferring the VM often, split files can save you a headache. Finally, you'll see a summary screen called Ready to Create Virtual Machine. Before you hit Finish, click Customize Hardware. This is important. This is where we allocate resources from our real PC to our virtual one. For a smooth Ubuntu experience or Windows 11, I recommend at least 4 gigabytes. Don't allocate all your RAM. If your host PC has 16 gigabytes, giving 4 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes to the VM is a good balance. Give it at least two CPU cores. This makes the VM much more responsive. In VMware, there's this section called the Virtualization Engine, and this is basically where you tell VMware how it should use your computer's processor to run the virtual machine. Modern CPUs have special features like Intel VTX or AMD V that make virtualization way faster and more efficient, and VMware will usually pick the best option for you automatically. Most beginners don't need to touch these settings at all, but if you're running advanced setups like another virtual machine inside your VM, this is the place you'd enable or tweak it. In VMware, the network adapter settings decide how your virtual machine connects to the internet. You'll see options like bridged, which makes your VM act like it's another real computer on your network with its own IP address. NATI is the most common. Your VM shares your host's internet connection, just like devices behind a home router. Host only means the VM can only talk to your computer, but not the internet. There are a few more advanced ones, but for beginners, NAT is usually the easiest choice because it just works out of the box. When you're done, click Close and then hit Finish. The VM will now start up automatically and boot from the Ubuntu ISO. We're now installing the OS just like you would on a brand new physical computer. Just follow the regular installation steps like you would on a physical PC. And the installation has started. Once the installation is complete, it will ask you to restart. Go ahead. After the restart, you'll be greeted by the Ubuntu login screen. Log in with your credentials. Welcome to your new Ubuntu desktop. If you notice the screen size is a little small and the mouse might be a bit clunky to move in and out, especially when installing operating systems that are not popular, you can fix that by installing VMware tools. As you can see here, they are grayed out because they were automatically installed during the installation process. VMware also allows you to connect removable drives like flash drives so they appear inside the virtual machine.
You can also connect, say, your webcam, which is on your physical machine, and use it inside the VM. Snapshots in VMware are like save points for your virtual machine. Imagine you set up your VM, install some apps, and then take a snapshot. It freezes that exact state. Later, if something breaks or you mess things up, you can roll back to that snapshot and your VM is instantly back to how it was. It's super handy for testing software, trying out settings, or experimenting without worrying about permanently messing up your system. They are some more options you can check out on preferences. Those which are grayed out, you can only make changes when the VM is shut down or off. Shared folders in VMware are a feature that lets your virtual machine and your host computer share files easily. Instead of copying things back and forth with USB drives or over the network, you just pick a folder on your main computer, and VMware makes it visible inside the VM. That way you can drop files in and out quickly, like dragging something from your real desktop straight into your virtual machine. It's mainly there to save time and make working between the host and VM a lot smoother. If your mouse pointer is stuck inside the VMware, just press the keys control and the alternate key. You can have as many virtual machines as you want. I already installed a Windows 11 virtual machine cause I am on a Linux machine and I sometimes want to use Windows. Do you know VMware has its own BIOS? The BIOS in VMware is just like the BIOS on a real computer. It's the little setup program that runs before your virtual machine starts the operating system. Inside, you can change low-level settings for the VM like the boot order, so you can choose whether it starts from the hard drive, a CD, DVD, ISO, or a USB. You can also enable or disable things like virtualization features or security options. Most of the time you won't need to touch it, but if you're installing an OS, troubleshooting boot problems, or testing software that needs specific firmware settings, going into the VMware BIOS is where you do that. You can also do dual boot, say Windows and Linux in VMware. And that's it. You are no longer a beginner. You've successfully installed VMware Workstation, created a virtual machine, installed an operating system, and installed VMware tools. You now have a safe, sandboxed environment to do whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. If this tutorial helped you, hitting that like button and subscribing really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.